Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. You are watching DMB's channel, my name is Laszlo, and today we are going to redesign the logo type treatments of animated feature films made by DreamWorks Animation Studios. I have picked three classic movies we all know and love, namely Chicken Run, Shark Tale and the B-movie. We are going to have a good look at the original title treatments and have a little bit of a graphic design based play to see how we could tweak these wordmarks in interesting ways, ok? Let's do it. Now, how are we going to tackle these logo redesigns? Let's talk strategy. In my experience, when it comes to rebranding and redesigning already existing graphic assets, designers can easily fall into certain traps, right? Sometimes you would see a brand refresh, only to realize that they seemingly haven't changed anything. We all have seen presentation decks like that. Beautifully crafted, long posts, all about how the designer maybe tilted the original logo, like minus 3 degrees, or changed the original grey colour to a 10% darker grey. A greyer grey. Changes no one in their right mind would actually notice, basically. I'm sure you have seen all these kinds of posts, they are all over social media. The other extreme is when a designer seemingly disregards every established brand guideline and makes something that looks and feels nothing like the original piece of design that they were supposed to redesign and rebrand. Which is oftentimes the result of basing all the creative choices and decisions on personal taste and opinion rather than actual research. So my strategy here is quite simply finding ways to make sure that my work stays in between these two extremes. I want to build on the original logos and tweak them in a way that feels new but also respects the original creative vision, yeah? Let's start with movie number one, Chicken Run from the year 2000. Now Chicken Run is a collaboration between DreamWorks Animation Studios and the Bristol based Armen Animation who have created Wallace and Gromit or Shaun the Ship if you are familiar. Now I don't know how many of you know this but essentially the whole plot of Chicken Run is a spoof of this classic movie entitled The Great Escape starring Steve McQueen which is one of those classic prison break type movies from 1963. The Great Escape with chickens was essentially the idea that the Ardman guys pitched to DreamWorks' executives, including Steven Spielberg who reportedly listened to the pitch and then said, well, since he owns a chicken farm and since The Great Escape is one of his favourite movies, he is absolutely on board, so he greenlit the project right there and then, according to legend of course. Now I'm telling you all of this because my theory is that the Chicken Run logo type looks and feels the way it does because it has also been inspired by these classic Great Escape marketing materials. Big block type based no-nonsense lettering with a slight army-like stencil effect. I have used this as my starting point for the rebrand but instead of trying to find a font which could perfectly mimic these letter forms, I thought I would just sketch these out myself by hand to begin with. I put my hand drawings onto Photoshop to trace these over, after which I played around with a couple different layouts, just to see what composition would look best here. I briefly played around with the idea of bringing in an actual chicken coop into the design. I thought it would be quite funny if we made a spoof of the Home Alone logo, but it just didn't feel right, it was a spoof within a spoof. So I dropped the idea very early on. Besides, I wanted to make sure that this title would look good as a simple one-liner of text. So after all this I moved my drafts into Illustrator for vectorizing. Here I set up a simple grid and traced over my work by creating perfect straight lines and rectangles. Here and there I added these little chippings onto the ends, as I thought it would be quite interesting to mimic the look and feel of wooden panels, as if the title itself was built by the same material as an actual chicken run would. This is essentially not much more than a classic pen tool exercise I had to do to build up these black strokes, after which, once it was all done, I switched the whole thing to color fields. I debated for a while whether I should keep the stroke lines white and use them as separators between all these different shapes, cause again, that would make the letters feel like they have been made by individual pieces of wood, you know, nailed together. But to be honest, I just didn't like the effect it created. It made the design look a little bit football jersey-esque to me. So eventually I ended up joining all these different parts of the respective letters to each other, just so they would look like, you know, well, simple filled up letters. Now 
On its own the word mark looked a little bit too clean for my taste. So once I was ready to pop this into context I added a bunch of textures, a little bit of wear and tear, a little bit of drop shadow, that kind of thing in Photoshop. You know, to make it look a bit more handmade. Like this whole movie essentially, this claymation, feels very handmade, isn't it? So here they are side by side, the original title treatments and my version on the poster. Which one do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments if you want. Now the second movie title logo I have looked at was Shark Tale from 2004, which is essentially another parody type movie. This time DreamWorks was making fun of the classic gangster movies like The Godfather and Martin Scorsese's Body of Work, who actually have voiced one of the characters in the movie, funnily enough. Did you guys remember that? I didn't. The logo this movie has been marketed with is this very simple word mark, yeah? Now, if you're a fellow graphic designer like myself, you probably agree with the common opinion that yellow, well, is just a horrible color. And I tend to advise people not to use it 99% of the time. The thing is shades of yellow often look illegible, it tend to not come out nicely in print and it's just headache material, really. Still, Dreamworks went with it, plus they also put a bright red stroke around the letters as well. Brave. Very brave. Now I'm just making educated guesses here, but I think they did this because these colors make the logo stand out extremely well on dark, bluish hues, which obviously have been used quite a lot in this movie, all about sharks under the sea. In fact, if you take a look at some of these earlier title treatments made by the original designer, you see how it was meant to be more sea-like color-wise in the beginning. When you look at this logo evolution, you gather how the movie went through a couple different possible titles, so the designer had to make sure that his work stays adaptable in terms of the concept, hence we have this no-nonsense simple type solution. One striking creative decision is this hidden shark fin here, which I thought was kind of cool, it's something we can work with, so again I started the ideation by doing some quick sketches in which I put this shark fin idea, well, not only in the negative space of the letter H, but pretty much everywhere else I could as well. I also wanted to do something interesting with the capital S at the beginning, adding these shark-like shapes onto the end of the letter. As I went along I tried smuggling more and more of these fishy tails and head elements onto the letters. I thought by doing this I could create a kind of coral reefy vibe, where there are fish coming at you from all directions, making the design look visually rich and exciting. Now eventually, after wasting a good afternoon building up all these shark shapes, I realized that I'm steering away, way away from the original brief, so I just had to stop. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes you get in that zone, thinking that you're being really really creative, only to later on realize that what you have done is totally irrelevant work. Hmm. Yeah. So I had to take a step back. I made a new artboard and this time, instead of taking the hand lettering approach, I started out with a simple font. I hid my shark fins in the letter H in a more subtle way than I did before, and I also just couldn't let go of my swirly shark shapes in the letter S, so I simplified all these ideas basically. I messed up some of the edges of these letters as well, again to go back to reflecting the unruly nature of coral reefs, and designed a custom letter A, which was closer to my initial hand drawing. Essentially I was looking for ways to include most of my initial ideas while keeping the general art direction closer to the original logo. So once all the ideas were put down I started dressing up the logo into the style DreamWorks came up with. I put the letters closer to each other, I added the red outline and this subtle wavy flag effect as well in order to bring my design home. This is what it looks like as opposed to the original title treatment, and this is what the difference it makes when you look at the same poster side by side. What do you think? I gotta say I'm pretty happy with this one. Now for logo design number 3 I have chosen the B movie from 2007, which I swear I was not aware how much of an online history this movie has. It was Jacqueline who pointed it out to me recently, how this movie went through a little bit of a renaissance, a rediscovery over the years, as Gen Z kids seem to think that it's hilarious, and its ability to deliver top quality memes is somewhat unmatched in the weird and wonderful world of the internet. In terms of the logo, they went with a very simple block capital word mark with lots of shiny 3D-esque effects in order to mimic the look and feel of honey. 
Now when you look at the overall look and feel of the art direction in the B-movie, you will find that they made most things look very organic. The character designs, the environments, everything looks a little bit asymmetric, a little bit wonky. Imperfect curves and shapes everywhere, just like how you would find most things in nature, right? Now if you take a totally simple wordmark logo and stick it on top of this kind of natural looking organic world, it will obviously stand out like crazy, yeah? Now this is exactly what I have to do with my design as well. I have to say, this logo was probably the most challenging one out of this whole set, for a number of reasons. For one, I really wanted to stay away from the usual B cliché imagery while designing. I didn't want to have black and yellow stripes, I didn't want to have hexagons and all that predictable stuff. So instead of all that, I started playing around with relating the word B with flower petals to create a coherent visual. I had this idea that if I looked at a perfect flower with all its petals, I could suggest and make the audience C and pick out the letters E and B in there somehow, if I do it in a clever way. The other tricky aspect was the very act of making something nice looking with so very little. When you have a nice long word to create with in Illustrator using the right font, you can easily make something impressive looking. But if you take a very short three lettered word like this one here, in which two letters are actually the same, well, you suddenly run into much more limitations. Now after some experimentation with my script fonts, I realized that I don't really like this 90s graffiti inspired style I'm heading towards with my initial flowery idea, so I switched back to some more traditional looking fonts to begin with. I ended up combining a couple different typefaces together for my word mark, and I included my initial flower motif but I put it in a much more obvious place, again just to steer back to the original designer's style and vision. Now these little dots on the sides are representing the bees going in for pollinating the flower, which I'm fully aware no one in their right mind would actually pick out, if I didn't say this out loud. I mean they are just little circles, aren't they? Hmm, yeah. You know what, that's a good lesson here as well. When your creative concepts are starting to become more and more abstract, that's usually a good time to stop, yeah? So after the framework was done, I of course had to apply a number of different effects to make the logo look all shiny and 3D-like, and voila! We got ourselves a new funky little B-movie title treatment. Now let's bring in the original one and then, well, you'll be the judge. So this is how my final little DreamWorks title treatment set ended up looking like, in relation to the original word marks, which inspired all this design work. I really hope that you find something in this video which you can, you know, take away and benefit from to utilize in your design workflow, okay? Our regular creative crew members know that this channel is not just about logo design, but we also talk quite a lot about illustration, interior design, decor and architecture, and everything else that we think overlaps all these cool things. Please leave a like to help us reach even more people with this video, and I hope to see you next time with some other cool and creative stuff, okay? Until then, see you guys!